In terms of protecting what you've got, I've got a three-step process for you. Step number one is understand your exposure in the market. And again, it's another thing that most investors don't do. I'm going to break down your exposure, which is really another word for your risk, isn't it? I'm going to break that down into the most simplest way you could possibly look at it. And what we're saying here is what is your risk? What is your loss or profit if the price moves by just one cent for whatever share you're investing in, BHP, Rio, whatever it is. If the price moves by just one cent, what do I stand to make or what do I stand to lose? Okay? And to work this value out, it's actually quite easy. All we're going to do is divide the number of shares we happen to be trading by 100. Divide the number of shares we're trading in by 100. So let's take a hypothetical example here that we're looking to invest in 100 shares of BHP. Okay? BHP looks pretty good. It's about $40 and we want to buy 100 shares. It's a typical transaction, isn't it? Question is, how much are we risking? If BHP moves in our favour by one cent, what do we make? If BHP moves against us by one cent, what are we going to lose? Now, what we're going to do is divide that number, 100 shares by 100. Now, I bet you didn't think you'd have to do maths this morning, did you? You thought, I can come to this free seminar, I can sit down and just, you know, chill out at the back of the room, relax, do nothing. Sorry, we're going to have to do maths, we're going to have to use your brains but I'm going to give you an easy one to start off with. I need everybody in the room to divide 100 by 100. How are we going on that? One, thanks. Simon, isn't it? Thanks, Simon. One, Simon's quite correct. If you divide 100 by 100, you get one. Okay. Now, there's another rule we can use. is basically, if you divide anything by 100, you knock off two zeros, don't you? Is that right? You knock off two zeros, you move the decimal point two places. Okay. So let's so say we move that decimal point a couple of places. And here's, a, here's your relation. This is probably what you want to write down if you're taking notes. For every 100 shares I'm going to invest in, on any share, if it moves by one cent, I make or lose one dollar. That's about as simple as it, as it can get, isn't it? For every 100 shares I invest in, every one cent movement equals one dollar to me. p and L. So if I buy 100 shares of BHP and it goes up one cent, I make how much? One dollar. If I buy 200 shares of BHP and it goes up one cent, I make two dollars. Okay, how quickly can BHP move one cent? Bang, isn't it? How quickly can it move a dollar? Bang. Okay, these things can move pretty quickly. So the number of shares you've got and that relationship will determine how much you lose if they go very quickly against you. Um, now, be honest here, and I, I, I'm sure I'm going to get somebody that, that's in. And p please participate, be honest. How many people in the room have exactly 5,000 Telstra shares? Anyone? Oh, I didn't get anyone this time. Last time I had about six or seven, okay? But generally I find uh, back when we got Telstra, back many, many years ago, we got a thousand for ourselves, didn't we? We got a thousand for the wife or the husband, we got a thousand for each of the kids, we got a thousand for the dog, a thousand for the canary, in all different names, we ended up with 5,000. Does that resemble anybody's situation? You remember when they came out? Yeah, of course we did. So let's take this for an example. I, th I think a lot of people do have Telstra right now. Um, how many people have Telstra? Show of hands. Okay, maybe just not 5,000. So if you had 5,000 Telstra shares, what is a one cent move in Telstra worth to you? Knock two zeros off, isn't it? 5,000, take two zeros off, 50 bucks. Think about that. If you've got 5,000 Telstra shares, every cent Telstra goes down, costs you 50 bucks. How many cents has Telstra gone down in the last year? Well, every cent's worth $50 to you. If you're holding Telstra right now, you had 5,000 shares, it's like every cent that goes down, somebody taking $50 out of your wallet, isn't it? And I don't think many people think of their investments like that, do they? But this is what I'm trying to say. You need to understand your exposure because you're not going to just have 5,000 Telstra. You might have 2,000 Westpac, 3,000 ANZ, 1,000 NAB, and so on and so forth, isn't it? And each of those have an exposure. And if the market moves by X percent in a hurry, you need to ask yourself, how much of my portfolio am I going to lose? And if that number gets closer and closer and closer to 50%, you're getting closer and closer to needing to make 100% to get back to break even, aren't you? Now, the number I said I was going to give you a number to try and keep your exposure within. I'm not going to show you how to do this today. There's simply no time. I just want to alert you to the need for you to investigate this more, to educate yourself more on how to do this. But I want you to keep your portfolio risk to less than 10%. You see, if you lose 10% of your portfolio in one big whack because you didn't see that top coming, and you never will, do you know how much you need to make to get back to break even? No, it's not 20, it's 11%. If you lose 10%, it's just maths. You need to make 11% to get back to where you were. If you lose 20%, now you need to, need to make about 33%, don't you? 
If you lose 33%, you need to make 50%. If you lose 50, you need to make 100. And it goes up exponentially, doesn't it? So what I say is, you know, if you can keep it to within 10%, it's not the end of the world, is it? You can kind of get back to where you were. I wonder how many people are doing this. How many people have actually sat down and worked out the exposure of all their stocks, and they worked out, well, if the market moved by this, I could lose that much. Has anybody done that? Hmm. Okay. Well, that's a big problem, isn't it? We need to start doing this. Does this come under that effort category of maybe not putting enough effort into our investing? 